we're very happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, I would like to invite you to talk a bit about your project and your book and uh, what, what triggered your interest in particles in the first place. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this invitation uh, as well. So, we are extremely excited about this online publication. And uh, it's true, as, as you already said, I mean, this is basically the result of our, our, our research, our project uh, during these five years. Uh, the project has been funded by the main research foundation in, in Germany through the University of Heidelberg, but this foundation is the DFG, so the Deutsche uh, uh, Forschungsgemeinschaft. And uh, it has been a very generous grant, so we, we were so happy to have this possibility to uh, enjoy team research, um, lots of travels and uh, lots of lively discussions uh, between us. That was really, really, uh, that was really, really an enriching experience. Uh, yes. So the, the the work is made of four volumes, um, which are including research chapters, and then a fifth volume is consisting basically of a database. Maybe we will talk later about uh, this database. Uh, yes, and the, the title is uh, um, Particles in Ancient Greek Discourse. So our focus is discourse. A discourse um, which deliberately is, is a broad ter term to include uh, um, any type of genre, any type of communicative setting, any type of literary work. And actually our focus is very selective, so is um, our corpus is only, so to say, uh, a collection of very, very well-known uh, texts. Uh, so we explored particles and particles combinations uh, in in the Homeric poems, uh, in the Victory Odes by Pindar, um, in um, in basically uh, Attic tragedy and comedy, Aristophanes, and then Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides, and then in the historiography of Herodotus and the historiography of Thucydides. So the idea from the beginning was to select uh, at least a few different genres because we felt that, uh, that it could have been very interesting to explore the, the communicative role of these very elusive words um, across genres. What happens about a certain particle in comedy that might happen uh, also in historiography or vice versa that cannot possibly happen in historiography? Um, so the initial questions were questions like this, so very, very, gener very general questions. Uh, yes, why, why the interest on particles? I would say, oh, very simply, um, we thought that we wanted to give justice to the many, many, many works that have been published before Deniston and after Deniston. I'm taking for granted that, that everyone knows uh, uh, what Deniston is. Deniston is the, the, the maybe, uh, the, the most well-known work uh, um, on, on ancient Greek particles that, that, that has been published uh, first uh, in 1934. Uh, and we simply we, we thought we wanted to give justice to the many, many works that much before Deniston and also after Deniston uh, digged, uh, delved, delved into the, the communicative role of, of these little words um, on the one hand. On the other hand, we felt that there was something maybe still missing, which is a kind of a discourse approach to particles, uh, which uh, which is somehow a, a, a particularly rich approach um, because uh, it allows us to look beyond the syntactic functions of these little words. It uh, allows us to see how particles work not only on the sentence level uh, but also on the level of on on the level of discourse above the sentence level, so discourse units, larger units of text. Our main work uh, and main research on particles and particle combinations um, basically was based on the very simple idea that particles co-signify things together with other words. They are not stable uh, uh, as individual words. 
the so in order to make sense of them it is essential to uh, look at the word surrounding particles which is something that people and scholars you know started saying many many centuries ago so that's definitely not new but we are practicing this uh, um, in any chapter of our um, of our units in, in the monograph and basically uh, our, the result is that we are simply looking uh, at the uh, constructions patterns um, larger uh, groups of, of, of words including particles so that we can possibly analyze uh, what their communicative role is. So the importance of particles um, is mainly regarding how to process, how to understand the unit that is including particles. So the particles are elusive and this is also why people somehow had difficulties in, in analyzing them and in most of all in accounting for them but uh, the, the trick is that they once you believe that particles help you uh, understanding how to process uh, the next uh, upcoming unit and how to process retrospectively what has been said before uh, all of a sudden, uh, the importance of particles uh, comes up, and you all of a sudden might discover that it's not such a good idea to omit them or to ignore them, because it's not really true that the meaning um, does not change. Uh, maybe it doesn't on, on the semantic level, but what you gain is something extremely important, which is the role of this next uh, utterance or the previous utterance uh, in the flow of the discourse. Um, uh, this is how they basically they, they play this, this important role on the communicative level. Um, they also help us chunking the discourse they, because they signal boundaries very, very generally, or conversely, they might signal projection. They might, they, they might anticipate that something more is going to come. Um, but all these functions are generally, let's say, um, semantically uh, unstable and syntactically optional, uh, mainly. So this is why, in the past, uh, philologists and scholars did not really uh, devote so much attention to these words simply because because they, 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 it was not easy to find a, um, a specific classification of of their usages. Uh, this is also why, for example, we in our monograph talk about um, you know a continuum uh, between different usages of these particles. We we don't want to divide uh, you know uh, uh, very very sharply uh, between some type of uh, syntactical role and some other type of syntactical role um, because they are multifunctional. Particles are multifunctional by definition. And uh, yeah, uh, and so they are basically they are as important as you know any other uh, parts of the ancient Greek language. Uh, they are a constitutive, constitutive part of, of, of this language. Um, yes, I think that might be a kind of a very, very general overview of what we are trying to do. Uh, we are absolutely incomplete, we know that. Uh, I mean, even though the, four, the first four volumes overall amount to something like 1,200 pages, but um, we still are very incomplete, but uh, it, that's, that's part of our goal, in, in a sense, because we, we don't want to offer an encyclopedia of particles. Um, we want to offer ideas, concepts, tools, so that then readers and teachers and scholars uh, may make sense of particles um, where they are <laughs> and uh, according to different possible criteria. I would like to also find out how you came to the idea of an online publication and uh, what are the advantages for your project? <clears throat> well, if I may reply, I think as for the idea, you'd have to ask Anna, because when I, you know, as when I was, you know, drafted into the project, this was already something that was likely going to happen. And I think this uh, also is an illustration of the 
uh, the, the, the collaboration that was there from the very beginning between Anna and the CHS. I think Anna was, this was a suggestion that may, may have come from the CHS and, uh, and that we were from the very beginning very excited about. Um, the reason we are, or the reasons we are excited about this are, um, are several and there are different kinds. What Anna was saying before is that uh, one thing that I think we really try to, to add to particle scholarship is thinking about particles beyond the sentence. This is something that has, even if we have hundreds of years, thousands of years of scholarship on particles, this is something that has done very little and certainly not consistently and, and systematically. We've tried to do that, that, which is not easy, but we've tried to do that. And if we want to do that and then show that, you need to be able to show larger bits of Greek. And in a book form, you're always limited to two pages. And if you want to say something about a passage of Greek, show some things visually, maybe with colors or with, with lines, or, and you want to then talk about that, the online version gives you the, the opportunity to, to divide your space much more, in much more exciting ways, really, and uh, makes you yourself, when you're doing the research, think again about how you can, how you can make your ideas visible on the page or on the web page, in this case. Um, so that's that's something that, that that online publication offers us that is simply not possible in any other way, uh, and it it allows you to talk about things more precisely, I think, and then show it, you know, in in a way that you could in the classroom, but not normally in a book. So so that's that's a great good advantage. Uh, the other thing is because we have you know we have these four volumes. Let's talk about that bit of the of the publication. And um, yes, one volume talks about Homer and Pindar, the other about historiography, the other about uh, tragedy and comedy. But we try to, I mean, as, as in the project itself, we've been working on all of this together. All our ideas are born from the, the collaboration. It's not like we've been working in our own little room for four years and then put the books together. So, and of course, in, in book form, you can do many things to show this, but online, you have the advantage and the, the opportunity to to physically link ideas and to show how this little thing, this little idea that came up when someone was working on, on Aristophanes is actually is actually happening in Herodotus and who would expect that and very specific things or, or very wide, like bigger ideas that you could show come back in all the authors or something that, that happens in one author and you might expect in another author but actually isn't happening there and, should, and you can show directly what is happening there. And, Guide people there, so that so that it's this kind of study. It's impossible to to write it from A to Z, right? So you have to. We've built it around ideas, bigger ideas, and 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 every every volume has focuses on some of these ideas and applied mostly to some of these authors. But actually, we would we would hope that all of this could be applicable to all of it, right? So we we by showing these links, I think. Um, that that makes the makes the very same amount of work much more valuable because you can you can you can show how everything is connected and that's hard to do in books we will do it in the paper version certainly but online that that's an incredible opportunity yeah um, that's so that's the practical side um, then of course the preprint publication in this stage of, of our work gives us the the opportunity of uh, reaching a, a very wide audience very early on. And because it is preprint, we, we will have the advantage of, of getting input from a, from a from many different kinds of people, which will make it better. Simply, we'll make the end product or the, the paper product at least a better text. Right? We will we will we will people will have good ideas. I'm sure things to, to change or of, or of tweaking phrasing or, or, or picking up mistakes, and actually there will be mistakes in 1,200 pages. So this is also an opportunity for us to, to reach these people and get input from them. Five volumes, four are the analysis volumes, you could say, and the fifth is, is this database. And this is something that was born during the project. The idea of this database came up as we were working on this, because one of the goals we set ourselves really early on was to make everything that it has been written on particles accessible, because yes, we can say on the one hand not that, that people don't engage with it that much. On the other hand, people have engaged with it a lot. It's just that people that, that this all this work, which goes back to the 16th century, is not necessarily accessible and therefore isn't accessed. So it's not being used. And and I mentioned this briefly, Deniston is always the place the English speaking world goes to. 
and Denison's work has incredible value, but it's not alone. And um, and so when we when we started noticing this, and we really noticed this because when we were searching, we found more and more and more and more and more. Just going through the footnotes, of one piece to ever further back, really. Um, then we started sort of thinking, well, this this won't be. You know, we actually shared it with colleagues, saying, "Look at this. We gathered all this stuff, and we've kind of, you know, summarized it and written a bit about it. What do you think about it?" And colleagues would say, "Well, you can't read this <laughs> because it was just a list of little summaries, and and it didn't it didn't work in that form." And then we thought, "Well, it might work if we can if we can make it in the form of a database. If we can make it so that." Um, this big body of, of text, really, is accessible in the way that you need it to be accessible. So you can ask a question, and you can, you can say, I want to I see how people have talked about this particular aspect of particles over the, over the last 500 years. And you can type in this one, this one idea of, for example, um, conclusive or conclusions, you know, particles that have to do with conclusions of any kind. And you could type in conclusion, and you could see what we've, what we've summarized about people saying something about particles that, that mark a conclusion of some sort. And then you could see how ideas, ideas change, or how people have their own vision of it, which particles actually fall under this category. That's what we, what we started thinking about. And then we started talking to the CHS again, saying, well, say we want this. What's, what's possible? And, uh, and we started talking. And, and it's been a very constructive uh, conversation, you could say. And I think it's going to be it's going to be a really really cool tool for people. I mean, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, to be fair, but <laughs> if you are, it's all going to be there. You know, it's 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 hundreds and hundreds of works. We've we've gathered all the information. So if you want to look at the work itself, you can you can. And we've provided a summary in English because a lot of this is in German, Swedish, uh, Portuguese, Latin, Latin. Yes, very much. <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of Latin, a lot of it Latin. <laughs> and a lot of it written by Germans, which makes it very hard Latin. And uh, and so it's, it's you know it's it's a, it's an obs it's an obscure corpus, but we try to make it accessible. And these summaries, we've tried to keep them as as objective as possible. So we've tried to say what this author says so, as much as possible in his or her terms. Right. So by by doing that, we we try to be a mediator of sorts, but not not as, as little as possible, so people can see. Without having to read the whole work itself, what this author is 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 on about basically. That's the that's the idea of the database. And in that sense, this database is crucial as a as a as a part of the work because a lot of the work in the analysis chapters will go back to the literature that's that's more more readily accessible in the database. And in fact, literature in the database was the basis for all of our thinking about particles. Right? We've read we've read all of it obviously. And this this is this. You know, this gave us much, much firmer ground to stand on when we try to say something new or try to build on something. Or a lot of the new things we'll say will point to someone in the 17th century saying, "Well, actually, this guy was already saying it," or in some way. Of course, not with the terminology of, of discourse analysis that we had at our disposal, but the ideas are there already, and that's so exciting. And even in some cases, a second century, like a, a Roman grammarian, will already say something about particles that is later not picked up again until we try to say something about it. And we think, hey, this is actually similar to what Apollonius Discourse was saying. How cool is that? So in that sense, the, the building of the database has helped us build our arguments. And 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 for anyone working with, with the analysis chapters, you will need to be happy access to the database because it's you know it wouldn't be the same without it. But you could use the database without necessarily looking at our analysis chapters because the database has has a function outside of that. Anyone doing research on this, say you're working on the New Testament, and you would like to see what stuff is there on God, on the particle God. You know, it's often dismissed as a simple particle; it just means because or for. But you know, there's a lot of literature on it, and people have thought about it very, very much. And you could use all of that; you, you could access all of that in that database. I think it might be worth adding a very practical note, which is that since we discovered that several of these, especially these old works on essays and particles, are actually available online, 
for free. So we will simply include the link, the internet link in the database, so that people can decide what, whatever they want to do, whether to simply to have an idea, get an idea about the content, the range of content, or where the examples are from, for example, um, through our summaries, or directly to the, go to the source, to the original source, and, and, and have the entire text available. So this is a, a further advantage of having this available online because you know with, with a few clicks people can get through anything basically they are interested in. We are extremely grateful to CHS because the CHS was very interested um, in this project from the very beginning. And uh, I think that with this uh, proposal of the of the online publication of the entire work, we really could not hope for you know anything better. Because, um, well, the, the, the work is kind of sizable, first of all, and um, to have it online, it gives it, you know, full and free uh, accessibility, which is amazing. Uh, full visi visibility, definitely, because it, it is the CHS. And uh, I simply think that, you know, for anyone interested in, in this work and in particles in general, um, you know, anyone can search for a specific paragraph. Uh, while at the same time having an idea of you know the structure of the entire work, and it makes you know easy any uh, any check uh, throughout uh, you know uh, contents of different chapters, contents of different volumes. So this is absolutely an amazing possibility for for us to have this you know this work um, you know made available for anyone interested in 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 this type of research. And again, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely uh, grateful because the CHS, you know, gave me full support uh, basically from the very beginning um, in this respect. And this is uh, priceless, really priceless. Uh, we have all three been in Heidelberg at least most of the time. So that was very practical. We could have many meetings, uh, discussions about new ideas or about drafts. We have always read uh, uh, different versions of each other's chapters. So. Um, most of the chapters are only written by one person, but everything has been discussed by three of us, and that has been very valuable. And the last part of the project, we have been mostly in different places, so then we needed um, online meetings, and they were also fewer, but by then we had written um, basically everything. One of the interesting findings is that uh, the frequency of sound particles tell something about the division between direct speech and the third person narrative. And this was quite fascinating uh, for Mark to observe because it sounds like uh, there are some particles I, I could mention especially ARA, ARA and the variations ARA and R, um, um, which seem to occur in some patterns to provide a connection between the ongoing performance and the tradition, the immanent tradition that the bard is recalling, so to say. The, the, um, and one more particle that might be connected to that, according to Mark's finding, might be the little particle T, also establishing a kind of a connection with the large body of knowledge uh, shared by the bard and the audience. Um, yeah, whereas there are other particles that are more typically occurring uh, when the bard is reproducing the speech of characters, like, uh, and this was already observed in the past centuries, like uh, the particle slash interjection A, the, with the, the eta with the circumflex. Okay. Uh, which most typically occurs in direct speech. It, it occurs also in, in, in you know, uh, third-person narration, but mm, not really uh, alone. Uh, it occurs in the third-person narration um, together with other particles or in clusters like a toy or something like this, whereas a alone typically occurs in the dialogue. And it sounds like a lively particle um, adapted uh, uh, in such a way to render a little bit the, the voice, the mood, uh, at a certain moment of a character. So 
we divided the corpus, and of course not in a random way, but uh, according to genres, and uh, tragedy and comedy are also very different from each other, but they do have, of course, uh, many similarities, and they prompt certain questions uh, rather than other questions for other genres. Um, so for me it was very relevant how characters, uh, different speakers react to each other, for example, or how a song is different from a dialogue or from a long monologue. Those kinds of questions were uh, relevant um, uh, to my part of the corpus, and um, yeah, I found some nice, th nice things con uh, connected to that. Uh, for example, that some um, particles are much more needed, much more useful mm -hmm. in the parts where speakers directly react to each other, and others more in the songs, for example. So that um, those kinds of things helped to see how the particles were used, uh, to see the, the communicative differences. Also uh, differences in what characters are doing when uh, one character says something and the other one uh, reacts to that. The one thing could be a question, the other thing could be an answer, and some particles are used more in questions and other, others more in answers. Or they might be used in both, but then they might have a different function or be found in a different construction. So these kind of contextual things are very uh, extremely relevant to our interpretation of particles, and that holds for any text. But in the case of dramatic text, the contextual features that you have to take into account are connected to the dramatic context. One particular metaphor that we we love, and uh, it is something that we have been also uh, you know uh, re recording at the end of our landing page on our website uh, at the University of Heidelberg, and it, this is something taken from uh, the work of Schraut, uh, who was a, a German scholar, a German philologist, uh, uh, who wrote in something like 1849. Uh, that particles um, should be seen as the nerves, as the nerves through which the mind pervades the body of speech, something like this. This, this is how the metaphor uh, goes. And uh, we have been simply fascinated by, by this metaphor because in one image, it, you know, uh, there is this idea that particles provide energy, they provide movement. They, they make finally discourse alive and uh, this is something that we uh, we found nice. Thank you John and thank you Professor Bonifazi, Anna Mieke. We're grateful to have had you here today with us. Thank, thank you so you much. Very much. Thank you.